We built this Dodge Ram in four days, and we did it for free. Hey guys, Matt here with Bleepin' Jeep. We're gonna do this entire build in one video, so grab a Dr. Pepper, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Oh snap, that's way too much money. I don't have that much. Ooh, a Yoda. A Toyota, $47.99. No. It jump stumps, but I ain't got that cash. Ooh, nothing like a good old Cherokee. $16,000. <laughs> you people that are selling it like this, you're crazy. You're crazy. Dude, 2,800 bucks, we could afford this. And I bet it even has a Hemi. It's got a Hemi. Yo, yo. <laughs> I hit something. We got this thing for a steal, and it's got great steel. <laughs> Sawzalls are overrated. You just drive around and don't wash your truck. Wait, we're ready There's now. <laughs> 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 All right, so we got this truck from Pull Apart at a steal of a deal, and it kind of sat in my yard for a long time. I didn't really know what to do with it until we thought... Well, we actually thought we were gonna turn it into the world's cheapest rock crawler. We did come to an issue though. We did find out that the motor is hurt on it, so... It's got uh, seven cylinders. <laughs> <laughs> So we didn't want to put too much money into it, knowing that the engine could go out at any moment. So we're going to build this thing on a basically zero dollar budget. Try not to spend any money. If we have to, we'll spend a little bit. But basically, we're going to go into this looking to spend nothing, but turn it into something that could be a rock crawler. So with that being said, there's nothing we can really do to it as far as lift kits or anything else. So it's going to be a matter of Sawzalls and... Welders. And welders. Yeah. <laughs> Sawzalls and welders. <laughs> I just broke the tailgate. <laughs> I just broke the tailgate. <laughs> well, I guess... guess we don't need a tailgate. <laughs> Alright, so first things first, we gotta get this thing stripped down to the bare minimum. When we're gonna put big tires on this, we don't want them to rub, so we're gonna pull off everything, cut everything. That's the plan. What are we gonna do first? I say we chop up the front first and get the bed off. That's gonna be our two major things. Because right. this thing is way too long to be able to accommodate a rock crawler. I think there might be some shortening in our future. So what we were thinking is it has this perfect dove nose. So the plan is to go ahead and pull the fenders and headlights off. We can't drive it on the road, the motor's no good. So we're gonna go ahead and take all this off and just have an already factory Mopar dove nose that Ram decided to give us. Yeah, it looks like if you were to take this fender off right here, it'll just curve around like this. That'll make room for the bigger tires. And we'll have to probably open this rear section right here by your feet. But other than that, pull the bumper off, you think? Absolutely. Actually doesn't have that much mold in there. Maybe for you. Colt doesn't like mold being from the north, but it's something we live with down here in the south. So when I drove this thing back from Pull Apart, we had a serious issue with the brakes. They were chattery. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, get it back here. And this is our brake line assembly going to the anti-lock brakes. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is make some brake lines. All I gotta do, Matt, is bend it in 
that direction. <laughs> like that. That's all you need. <laughs> then you're going to push it back with the operation zero. You want to lube it up a little bit. Pull that until it stops. Go to operation two. All set. Look at you. Hey, Matt. Huh. Back to back. Back to back, front to front. Yeah. Front to front. <laughs> I have a mouse house up there. Is that your mouse house? We're gonna throw them on you. Fly out. Them. That's not mouse pee, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Even though this thing is a rusty pile, there are things that are nice, like these headlights. We can polish these up. We've shown you guys how to do that before. Take these off, sell them on eBay or Amazon, and that should give us enough money to buy a winch. Five bucks, cha-ching. <laughs> One of them's for sure vice grip size. <laughs> Ram air injection now. <laughs> if we build something here to protect it. Nah, we don't need any protection. That's what you said before you had Ella. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody broke this mirror, otherwise we could sell these, but we could still sell the dragon one. <laughs> but we also have these really nice doors with some uh, chrome visors. We could sell these and make some money too. Three more dollars. Cha-ching. <laughs> Okay, anybody need some doors? Got doors for sale. 2009 Ram pickup 2500. Dodge doors for sale. Just $29.95. Oh, oh yeah. that was fast. Oh, look at that. We just dropped 50 pounds. Colt left this here like two years ago. For a video that you guys will never see, <laughs> <laughs> on a vehicle that we had that you'll never get to see, and that was, uh, Part of it. It was a Suzuki. It was a really cool video. Never put it out. Tell them you want to see it. You guys tell them you want to see the video because I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see it. <laughs> we'd have to. We'd have to re-edit some stuff. Dude, look at all the visibility we're gonna have now. Like, there. Maybe, maybe we should make a convertible out of this thing. We'll just cut the top off. I know there's not a lot here, but a little bit make me feel a little better personally. <laughs> It's only been about, what, 20 minutes? I feel like we're working in a chop shop here. This thing's coming apart quick. <laughs> Josh, you said you were a body guy, but what did you really do for a living before <laughs> this? For a few years. <laughs> Dude, it's like a superhero chest plate. I am Hemi Man. Oh wait, you gotta turn it around. That's the neck hole. You got it upside down. Oh. <laughs> I got abs. Colt, we need a big strong man. I'll just fill in today. Anybody home? This was stuck on there. What on earth is that? And what is it for? It's just a magnet. Why? Why is this here? You guys know? Strikes in this thing. <laughs> ah, I had my ear hole. <laughs> A hot ember just went right down into my eardrum. <laughs> Leaf fire. I told you, I said, film things if they catch on fire, and they did. I'm gonna need you to step on this really hard, because the ground is so bad it won't cut. <laughs>
Brand new Dodge bed for sale, no rust. Holy smoke. We could open this up and have it sitting right here. When Josh needs a ride, he's just gonna straddle the fuel tank. Dude, it's got three seats up front. Why are you being greedy? <laughs> Josh likes skiing. <laughs> We're gonna have to use some of our sales stuff to get a new drive shaft because an aluminum one isn't gonna hold up. Okay, what's the next step? If it were me, I'd say we torch out the spare tire, cut the frame off, and then we pull the gas tank, and then we can cut the frame and suck it up. What if we took the leaf springs that I have and just and just shoved them up way up there? We could just cut them off and then re-weld them up here. I'm game for that. All right, we gotta think about this off camera. Found these in the woods. If we need shorter leaf springs, now it's not gonna sound as quiet. <laughs> <laughs> That's mouse poop. Mouse pee. We just pulled the exhaust and a lot of fluid came out. That looks really orange, similar to the Mopar antifreeze. What do you guys think? <laughs> we need to see what color antifreeze is in there. <laughs> Probably no color. <laughs> There's no freeze. Okay, so here's the current game plan. Throw the whole truck away. Yeah. <laughs> We are going to try to cut these brackets off, move everything forward, and that way we can have the axle here right behind the cab. And that'll still give us about a JK-ish wheelbase. About 117, 120, and somewhere in there, I'm betting. <laughs> Is it a little breezy there now, Josh? <laughs> Air conditioning. Air conditioning. <laughs> Gotta get them Duluth pants, my friend. These are supposed to be good, aren't they? So far this process has been do a little work, sweep up the work. Do a little work, sweep up the work. Rust everywhere. We're gonna cut these, slide the whole axle forward and just re-weld them. Simple as that. Will it work? We don't know, but. That's, that's budget at its best. That's our game plan right now anyway. We can't get these bolts out. I think that's, that's the biggest issue. All these bolts are so rusted they just won't come out. So don't even take them out. It's lunch time. We're kind of uh, out of tables. I had an idea though. What? He's so proud of himself. There you go. Here's your table. Yay. <laughs> oh yeah. I wish you guys adorable. That's good. <laughs> You're soft. I don't have your hand. You looking for this? Mm -hmm. Lunch of champions right here. Pull up a table. What do you got there? I got a little something for this truck. And because I know that your daughter is learning to drive, so I figure it can be a dual purpose. <laughs> <laughs> They're magnets. Is there more than one? Yeah, I got a couple. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put that on Hope's feet. Yes, please. That would be great. Maybe that should influence the name of this truck. Like, Driver's Ed. Oh. Ah, well. All right, we gotta talk fast because my battery's about dead. What we're gonna do is lift this up. Slide the axle out. Unfortunately, Matt also has an off-road jack like I have and he hasn't put it together yet. So we're gonna put that together real quick so we can come up high enough 
to actually get this axle out. But what about my pretty green one? It is pretty. I like green. You know what's funny is I ordered the orange one and he ordered the green one and somehow they got swapped. <laughs> the orange one went to his house and the green one went to my house. Yep. What are you doing over there? Cleaning up rust. So Josh is getting that ready to weld stuff too. So we're just gonna slide this whole thing over there, weld it back. And we should have a rock crawler. It's, that's, we'll drive rock it's crawler. Th that simple, guys. <laughs> Everybody should have their own custom rock crawler. Whoa, that thing is huge. Oh yeah, it's thug. Do we have floor jack races? Yeah. <laughs> Switch it out, hurry! That's going to That is pretty tall, actually. This? That's like... Yeah. That's tall. up to here. That's a trick. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. There you go. Now we need to clean up these brackets so that we can re-weld them in a different spot. But otherwise, making good progress. Look at this thing. All this, what time is it? It's only like three? Oh, uh, two or three in the afternoon, yeah. We made all this progress in like four hours. Here's something I was looking at too. If you look down the side here, how thin this is. Yeah. This this kicks out. Maybe we should just chop this off. Get rid of all that. <laughs> this is where you speak. Okay. Yeah, look, I didn't know if you had, could see me or not. All right, so we... <laughs> I can okay. see you. You can see me. Okay. So we went ahead and got the Badlands winch plate. We're going to go ahead and put a 12,000 pound winch on here. We don't have a whole lot of faith in this motor. We have to have something that's going to protect it. Realistically, you could still sell all this stuff to purchase this pretty easily. But we are going to set this here and then weld it on, and then Matt cut these nice little triangles that we're gonna burn in like that. Since we don't have a bumper anymore, this will act as our winch plate and bumper. Yep, quarter inch thick. Okay. Alrighty. That's a pyro. All right, time to roll this axle forward and see what happens. <laughs> oh, hold on. It's not lining up, but as Colt said, it's because it doesn't have the weight on it. When you're setting up for leaf springs, and you don't have the exact measurements, you never really know where this thing's gonna settle out at. Luckily, we took the measurements from where it was over here, transferred it over here, but that doesn't mean that it's gonna line up until the weight's on it. Hold on, hold on. We have shortened the wheelbase about six feet on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be ridiculous. <laughs> Stubby Bob. Come over here and look what it looks like. <laughs> We're gonna be cutting off only like five feet of frame. Imagine if you put the bed back on it and just cut the wheel well up here, what that would look like. <laughs> <laughs> then you put a lot of weight in the back and the whole thing just like wheelie time. It would be, I know it's gonna sound crazy, but it would be kind of cool to put the bed 
back on it if we just cut like took the front part of the bed and then just cut it off and bobbed it back up. That's a lot of work. That's too much work. So we need to get this down here, but that means adding about a thousand pounds here. But I've got Big Susie. Have you met Big Susie? No. Colt needs to meet Big Susie. This is Big Susie. Okay, new problem. We have to loosen this, otherwise this isn't going to work. As you can see, it's not really a nut anymore. It's more of a rounded jujube. Yeah, this one's about the same. Dude, we, we're getting there. Go Milwaukee. Good thing it's only how many years old? 2009. Yeah, it's only 12 years old. It's what, 13, 14 years old? It doesn't jingle, jingle. It folds. <laughs> yeah, see. There we go. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Very nice. Actually building a rock crawler here. No budget. So I'm just thinking about this right now. Everybody that builds a four-door JK, you got 15 grand in buying your JK before you even build it. This has already got one ton axles, four doors. <laughs> yeah, like, and a Hemi. I mean, seven cylinder Hemi, but that's still, you know, one more cylinder than the three six has. And what did we pay for it? 2,600 bucks? Yeah. <laughs> We got a rock crawler. I don't, think the, I don't think the axle hit the frame either. Like if it does, it's gonna be, that thing will be way inverted. You ready to call it a night tonight? I guess so. Josh already took off, he had to go home. We're gonna call it a night, but we're gonna be right back like that. So next morning, we are measuring a drive shaft. The easiest way to measure a slip yoke is to go ahead and slip the yoke back in if you can and then measure from joint to joint, or joint to flange, whatever you need. This thing is massive. <laughs> it's a little bit long. <laughs> Why is it called a double carton if a single is not a single carton? I don't know. <laughs> so we need 40 inches here to here. I'm gonna take this to Knoxville drive line and uh, let you guys get dirty today. You gonna hit up top golf while you're there? Should I? I know when I go, I always bring an extra pair of socks in case I get a hole in one. It's too early, man. Don't put that at me. Alright, so Matt's off to the driveline store. It's just me and Josh today, so we are going to... Party! Party, yeah. Forget this. We're going to do something else. <laughs> no, we're going to go ahead and chop this frame off. We're also going to try to move this uh, receiver hitch up back behind where the leaf springs are. Along with, we got a lot of other things up front. Uh, I gotta finish that winch bumper and some other little goodies. So let's get started. All right, guys, I got a job to do. I have to go get a drive shaft made. I've got to pick up some steel. I've got to pick up some more steel. I've got to pick up a brake line. Uh, was there anything else? I hope not. Maybe I should have made a list. Curl bar. <laughs> Josh, you're getting real professional with that frame cut. Yeah. Well, Josh is gonna cut the frame. I'm gonna take off one of the most important things that you don't need when rock crawling, and that is a front sway bar. 
So we're gonna go ahead and pull that off. So I should say there are sway bars out there like the, the Rock Jock sway bars that you can actually flex with and they're designed for off-roading. These are not. These are designed to keep your body from rolling at all and they're designed to keep that suspension stiffer. So we're gonna go ahead and take that off. So far we're looking good. Ooh. That was just knuckle buster. Owie, twice. Alright guys, we're at Knoxville Driveline. This is Adam. Whenever I have an issue, or if I'm at Windrock, I break a drive shaft. If anybody else breaks a drive shaft, I send them to this guy because he can get them fixed up. So if you guys are ever out at Windrock or in Knoxville area, check it out. If you need a drive shaft, this is the dude. He's going to hook us up, so we're going to shorten this down to, what do we say, 40 inches? Yeah, that's what you've got written Do you have what we need? <laughs> I think we can come up with it. All right. So is this still usable? It's pretty yeah. crusty. Yeah, we can clean it up for what you're doing. He's got a welder with a vacuum on it that vacuums all of the gas is out. This guy right here is for when he's welding the drive shaft. You just hang that on just like the one at our shop. Look at these big giant lathes. Those are really cool. Do you call these lathes? These are the balancers. There we go. There's about another balancer over here. Those things are long. Got a mill over here. This is what we need on the Jeeps. Look at how big. What is that off of? A dump truck? A UPS truck, wow. That thing's huge. Have you ever started a lathe with the chuck key still in there? No. No, but I've heard horror stories. <laughs> we need to add that to our collection. We've got about 35 pounds of this already. <laughs> yeah, I don't doubt it. So here's we got this much to put on that truck, and then it got put onto this Jeep for a different use. But now we gotta pull it back off so we can put it on there. I've had really good luck with these things. I don't know about you guys, but so far it's worked really well on a couple of my rigs. I used the snot out of it when we were up in Colorado. We're winching up 10 falls. Quick trick for you. If you're trying to pull out a cotter pin, the easiest way I've ever found is get a pair of side cutters and you just pinch it right here on the edge and then you can just pry against it and it'll come right out. Every time. Ding. <laughs> That it goes all the way through from this side. That is sweet. How fast is that? Like a hundred miles an hour? <laughs> yeah. Look at that. That's the speed right there. There you go. There she be. Alright, thank you so much. Once again, Anybody ever needs drive lines in the Knoxville area, Windrock, close by, give them a call. Thank you, dude. I appreciate you. Yeah, I got my side. Don't drop it on my toes. <laughs> right. Now we got a Bob truck. We got the ultimate JK. Got one ton axles, a Hemi motor, four doors, same wheelbase. It's gonna be sweet. All right, now I'm headed over to Specialty Metals. This is where I get my bulk metal supply. I'm gonna get some sheet steel and maybe some square box for uh, this Dodge, because we are gonna do something cool. All right, got my 
drive shaft, got my steel. Now I need one more thing, that's the brake line. So we're gonna go to Auto Zone. Get in zone, Auto Zone. bracket here that you use to open and close your hood latch. I had to take that off because I had to cut the grill out to fit the winch. But, the hood shuts and you can get to the hood latch right there. So, there's our winch, nice and sucked up. Ding. I think now it's time for another dance party. Because we don't have any money for a lift, this is a 100% budget. We are going with our budget tires. This is the Milestar 38, the MT-02. If, you if you're not familiar with the MT-02, it's a lot stronger. It actually has a thicker sidewall. They added in more filler and the bead. And they, did, they redesigned everything, actually. They redesigned the outer carcass. They redesigned the nylon crisscrossing. They used a different company for the nylon. And they actually redesigned the rubber that it makes it even grippier. As muddy as it is out here though, we still may groove them to open them up more. Just like Tim Cameron or anybody else does with their super swampers, we are probably gonna open these up for this. My wife's been telling me to lose weight, I could start doing lunges. Uh -huh. That'd be one real big step forward for me. <laughs> <laughs> probably kick that. Take that corner in. Oh yeah, look at that. You got clearance now. Way to clearance that, Josh. Woo! Got it. Oh! So one of the things we don't know about this truck is what gears are in it. Now you can assume it probably has 410s or 411s, which is basically the same thing, but we don't know for sure. This is a trick that I can show you how to do at the salvage yard, actually, to figure out what gear ratio it is. Now because this thing is an open diff, I'm gonna only spin one tire and the other tire has to stay down. If it had a limited slip or a locker, we'd have to have both tires up. We marked the pinion yoke. And the top of this case, so this is straight up and down, and we marked the tire right here. Now I'm gonna spin this tire one full revolution, and we're gonna count how many times that yoke spins. With an open diff, that yoke is gonna spin half of the gear ratio. So if we have four tens, it's gonna spin just barely over two rotations. If it was a locked rear end where both tires are spinning equally at the same time, it's gonna actually give us our exact four, just a little over four rotations to show us exactly what it is. So let's start spinning. One. Forward. Ooh, that's it. It's like a 373 probably. Yep, 1.85. So yeah, 373s, 1.85. So it did 1.85 rotations off of one full tire rotation. You times that by two, we have 373s. If this thing had a limited slip in it, or when we go ahead and weld this rear diff up, I'm gonna spin this tire and it's gonna give us the full 3.73 rotations in the ring and pinion, right here on the pinion yoke. I bring presents. You brought a thing? I brought a thing, and a thing, and I got more things in there. Holy smokes, that thing is high. We got tired of hitting our shins, <laughs> so we figured you'd rather just be at eye level, so you won't hit your shin. Just your eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> Winch is on the front too. And we still had time for a dance party. We're having a dance party? Oh, you missed out. Oh, You're man. back now. So are you telling me that we're gonna build this entire thing without utilizing the lift? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll put it on the lift to weld up the diff. Just for funds? Yeah. One of the things that did fail on us was the rear brake line. This thing was completely rottened out. You could see right through it, so we did have to get a new one of these. Instead of cutting the line, I'm just gonna weasel it back and forth once, because that's the cheapest way to do it. Do you need a bender? <laughs> Last one. Last one. Last get her. tire. Last tire. We are building a rock crawler. Oh yeah. But when we put that big gas tank in there, it'll work. Oh, 
let's bounce. Oh yeah. <laughs> As you can see here, the hump of this truck sticks out on the back end. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that off. And that way we can suck it up to the same width as the rest of it. Rock crawler stuff. So one of the things I did here was went ahead and pulled the airbag fuse because I don't want that to go off when we hit a rock or a bump, especially on a rock crawler, and especially one that we've already chopped up. I thought you were talking to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Check this out. We got us a little protection side protection there and armrest in one. We'll also be able to plate that and make it look so cool. Oh yeah, we're talking fancy. Hi dollar. High dollar. I'm gonna test it. <laughs> Need a little uh, cup holder right here. Armrest. For the Dr. Peppers. Uh -huh. Perfect. So you've seen us groove tires before. We've grooved swampers, we've grooved all kinds of things. In this case, we are going to groove this because we are in the east and you have to have huge spacing for the mud to clear out. So this is a trick I used to do with the old super swampers with the, with the three stage lug is taking out this inner lug completely and then maybe taking out the insides of here or maybe just chasing that maybe is what I'll do and just widen these out. What do you guys think? That's my thought. We'll find out. All right, since I've got one of these made already, I'm basically just gonna copy it exactly the opposite, so like a mirror image. If the dodge is the same on side to side, then it should be perfect. What are you doing there, Haas? Just grooving some tires out, making them East Coast worthy. I know what it's like down here in the southeast. I don't think you've experienced it yet. I recall it being ra raining on us when we did Rattle Rock the very first time. Yeah, but that was just rain. That wasn't. <laughs> that was like the first rain. In the winter, we're talking about the the 85th rain. <laughs> With all the crazy things going on in the world today, did you hear clothespins are getting married now? Yeah, they're meeting online. <laughs> Look at that JDM quality right there. Gonna go right there. Perfect. Turn right at the tire. It's gonna heat the tire for extra traction. Low mo. Alright guys, if you look right here, these spring hangers are keeping us from flexing very much because this is a big ginormous truck. So what Colt is gonna do is heat these up. We're gonna bend them straight up and down so that these leaf packs can separate further. flavor written all over it. We just gained a lot of flex. <laughs> you 
could cut these out, just cut them off completely, but then what can happen is the leaf springs can twist. So that's why we turn them up so it'll stay inside and stay straight while it flexes. Not a lot, but we probably gained two inches maybe. Yeah. When you're going cheap, that's your spare wheel. <laughs> Josh, have you done the sledgehammer trick? Yeah. You haven't done the sledgehammer trick. I've shown this to Matt, it's been a long time now. But you gotta hold it out and get, can't bend your elbow. And then you gotta touch your nose. And then come back out. <laughs> my strong arm is my bad wrist. You don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, one here. Yeah, Matt's got one for you. You gotta hold it at the base. That's your nose. Oh, you're bending your elbow, Matt. You're cheating. <laughs> yeah, you gotta hold it at the bottom end, but you're close enough. Don't don't break your nose. <laughs> Did we math the math correctly, Matt? No, oh, we just guessed. <laughs> Every engineer's head's exploding when you say that. <laughs> oh, don't blow up on me, Rusty Shock. Don't blow up on me. <laughs> just in case you guys didn't realize it, all we did was take the old brackets off, cut them off, and then cleaned them up and welded them back in place. Basically in the same place with giving us a little more droop for the shock. So we're gonna reuse the factory gas tank. It is super long. So to get it up out of the way, we decided to go right through the body. And we're gonna mount it right here on top. Where it's up and out of the way, we can still use the factory fuel pump, factory connections. All we have to do is probably add some extensions. The poorest way to move a gas tank. <laughs> That's what we're all about here, the poorest way. <laughs> Since we're on a time crunch, we cut a lot of corners here. Check this out. Speaking of corners, that doesn't match up. So, see what you got. We'll try it. It's gonna get crazy. Cover your eyes. Be ready. <laughs> I don't know if I even moved. And no, no. I'll try one more time. That moved. I think it. Oh yeah, I That moved. definitely moved. One more time, I think you'll have it. Getting quick on! Okay. <laughs> I think that, uh... I only know 25 letters of the alphabet. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. One of the things that we got to do oh. is bleed brakes. That would be really bad if we forgot that. Lord. So you always want to start at the farthest right. brake line. That's going to be the rear right, okay. rear left, and then the oh. front right, front left. The farthest Lord. from the master cylinder. Yeah, <laughs> still getting a lot of air. Look at this. Okay. <laughs> it's like Christmas over here. I was wondering why all these lights Lord. kept flashing. Oh. Lord. All right, we're getting there. <laughs> Completely ridiculous. That'll work. <laughs> Couple ratchet straps. I know it's loud. Josh is loud. He's a loud guy. But look at how that worked out. You're gonna have to stand on your tiptoes to fill this thing up. Yeah, if it overflows, you're gonna get a mouthful of gas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moment of truth. It's gonna sound good. It's gonna sound like a hemi. <laughs> We even we even did it right where the heat shields away from the shock and the fuel <laughs> tank and the fuel tank. Yep. Nice. It's 
gonna be plans. Extra, extra shielded. This is uh, the $300 fuel install with two sheet metal screws. Filler install. Nobody's got their safety McGoggles on. Nope. Two two. Those are not welding McGoggles. I'm not gonna look stare at it. I close my eyes. <laughs> this one has a Ram Air feature to give this sucker way more horsepower right there. Horse ponies? Yep. So sweet. That's the safety squint. So this piece sticks out right here. We need to beat that in so that we can put this sheet across. Oh, we can try it. Don't hit Josh's teeth. What? What? <laughs> Nothing. You just stay over there. <laughs> oh yeah. I think it's inside it. I think we're good. Rock crawler is going to be right without a good paint job. So we're going to go ahead and wash this thing, scrub it down. Our resident painter, Josh, said that we should use Dawn dish soap and Scotch Brite to scuff this paint up before we go ahead and get it ready and prepped. All right guys, we're almost finished, but we're not quite there yet. We're gonna paint this thing to make it stand out. For that, we've partnered with Duplicolor, and we're gonna make this thing shine. Josh is our resident paint aficionado. They call me Rattle Can Randy. <laughs> so we picked up some Duplicolor engine enamel. What that's gonna do is give it a nice glossy shine. It's got a ceramic coat in there, so it's gonna be very hard because we're gonna take this thing out in the woods. It's resistant to oil and stains because we're gonna need that because this thing's probably gonna leave oil and stains. And being an engine enamel, maybe it'll save us from catching on fire. Hey, whoa, 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 fire, fire. Hold <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's true, but it also dries within 30 minutes to an hour. And since we're in a big time crunch here, that's gonna be very helpful. So we've got some primer. We've got red for the main body of the truck. And then we're gonna do some accents in yellow. They call me spray can Stan. The neat thing about this stuff is it's actually the regular paint that you would use to paint a car that they put in a can. So that's also why we chose, chose it because it's gonna be easier for us to do out here in the woods. Of Matt's house. I don't have a spray booth so the wind factors into that, the humidity factors into that, the crap falling out of the trees factors into that. So spray can it is. Come to Bleepin' Jeep for your quality paint can and <laughs> quality car paint job you need. <laughs> Raise your hand though if you've ever painted a vehicle with a spray can. I know we did on the... <laughs> It's gonna look good though. Josh is after it. Look at him go. Got one overspray on this beautiful window, power window. We tested it last night. It worked. It does. Yeah. Yeah. In case you really want to breathe in that seven cylinders, we can open that right. up. Not that it'll make any difference with a big giant hole in the back. All right, Josh. Give me the like quick version of how to paint a car. Clean it. Sand it. Spray it. You, you forgot, forgot tape it. Yeah. 
You said quick version. <laughs> you said don't you said don't breathe it too, you forgot that part. Yeah, don't breathe it. Don't huff paint. Breathe oxygen. Okay, let's go with like the, the 30 second version. Clean it, sand it, clean it again, tape it, cover it, clean it again. How many times do you have to clean this thing? Yeah, you clean it many times. We gotta wheel this thing tomorrow. No, I'm not professional. That's what Josh is for. Who gave this guy a can of paint? I stole it. <laughs> you didn't tell me about this step. I did. Clean it again. I what? said clean. clean. Clean? Okay. Wax and grease remover. Wax and grease remover. This is your final paint prep wipe down. Final paint prep wipe down? Yes. With some wax and grease remover? Mm-hmm. Okay. Pimp my ride ain't got nothing on this paint job. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying to tell you. What happens uh, if it starts to sprinkle while we're painting? Oh, no, I've never painted in the rain before, but <laughs> I have. it's gonna ruin it. it Colt's ruins. right. <laughs> nah, it'll be fine, look. We're just laying down a little yellow where there's gonna be a couple stripes, the RT stripes. And we'll tape it off and paint it the rest of it red. You have to have stripes on a rock crawler. You do. Especially a Dodge. It's not a Dodge, it's a Ram. <laughs> They'll correct you on that. Especially a Ram rock crawler. You know racing stripes give you 15 extra horse ponies. That says racing all over it. Hey, Bumblebee. <laughs> If you guys got any questions on how to do your own driveway duplicolor rock crawler paint job, ask that guy right there. I'll also leave <laughs> links down below where you can find duplicolor. It's at O'Reilly's. I think AutoZone has it too, right? I think so. Down in the description. All right guys, day four. It's raining really good outside. So today was supposed to be simple. Just let paint dry, put stickers on. Easy stuff, but instead, look what I found when I come in this morning. <laughs> I think I revved it a little too much yesterday, putting it back in the shop. So now we got more things to fix on our list, but it's soon. Soon we're gonna get this thing out and test it out. Come get a load of this, see if you've ever seen anything like this in your life. Is that? A rust hole in the pan. <laughs> no, and I'm there. I, do, I live near Minnesota, and I haven't seen that. Look at look at above it though. It's like there's a hole right here. Oh wow! Look at this. Oh my gosh! Don't touch it too hard. So you think that happened from when I was pressure washing this thing? Were you pressure washing under here? Yeah, I was pressure washing the, all the steering and stuff off. Yep, right out of the rust hole. Wow. How do we fix that? A new oil pan? How do we temporarily fix that? 
I don't know. Rust belt, folks. What do we do? <laughs> Just look at that steering box. Oh, yeah. Box. Can we get the oil pan plug out and then drain the oil, clean it up, and load it up with flex seal or something? Or JB weld, but I don't know. Dude, that looks like it's just gonna fall apart. Oh yeah, there's oil coming out of that too. Neat. I think this is just one of those deals where we're gonna pull the oil pan and put a new one on. It's just too nasty. I mean, I can, I feel like I can just push my finger through it. You can see I can just push into it and stuff's coming off. That's not gonna survive one bounce when we're four wheeling. So we're gonna go ahead and just get a new oil pan. Right here is the bolt for the pickup tube, and that's keeping the pan from coming out. So I guess I gotta get creative to pull that pickup tube bolt out, and then I can drop the pickup tube, and the pan should come out with it. That's dumb. Come on, engineers. This couldn't just be a little lower here. Help me out, help me out. Gross. All right, well Matt's running over to Oak Ridge to get the oil pan. I'm gonna go ahead and take this diff cover off because if we're gonna make a cheap rock crawler, we better weld up this diff so we at least have some traction. It is rainy, rainy, rainy. I don't know if you can see that. We're gonna be going through some mud tomorrow morning for sure. This could be bad. Yeah. Little trick if you've never done that before, leave the top two bolts loose. That way you get that instead of a big fat mess. Isn't that interesting? It may have a working limited slip in there, a gear, a worm gear drive style, but thing is, is if you have a normal limited slip, if I spin this tire, this tire should go the same direction and it's not. We're gonna leave this one alone anyway, and we're gonna get to the front. You were worried. <laughs> now we just have to make sure not to hit anything with the rear diff. Look how thin that is. Got, oh, I know. It's paper thin. It's got chunks coming off of it. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> That's in my neck. <laughs> Freshy fresh oil pan. No leaky leaks. I've shown you guys this before plenty of times, but we're welding up the front diff since the rear is a limited, non-limited, slippy, McNew, <clears throat> don't know what it's gonna do thing. It's important to use non-chlorinated uh, brake clean because that way it doesn't actually hurt you when you weld it, it won't make that gas that will actually try to kill you. Yeah, you don't want to die. You have to preheat. <laughs> and that also makes sure that it gets all the stuff out of there when it's on fire. The fire balls. <laughs> Matt's secretly a pyro. He won't tell you that, but he is. And I've had the best luck welding all the teeth together and then the teeth actually to the carrier because once you burn the teeth together, you can't get them out of the carrier anyway. What'd you call it, an orb of traction? Yep, orb of traction. <laughs> That's the official locker name when you weld it up. Matt, I think it's missing something. What?
We built this Dodge. Is it a Ram? It's a, why is it? It's a Dodge? Ram. Yeah, they got rid of the name Dodge and went to Ram. I don't care. We built this Dodge Ram <laughs> in four days, if you can believe that. Yep, and we did it for free. And I bet you guys have been wondering this whole time how we did it, and this is how we did it. This is the actual build cost, $6,651. That is all the real prices. You guys can pause this if you want to. That's including the tires, the metal, the steel, um, the paint, everything that we used to build this Dodge, Absolutely. including the truck. This is if we were to sell all the parts we took off at the average eBay prices, we would actually be able to sell them at $8,600. We did not use any of the rusty stuff. I'm talking about the doors, the door handles, the hinges, the interior panels, all the pieces if you broke them down and sold them, window motors, all of it, we will actually make almost $2,000 selling it at the average eBay price. That is how you're gonna build a free rock crawler. In the next video, we're gonna wheel this thing out at Windrock. So stay tuned for that because it's been raining for the last week or so, so it's gonna be a mess, but I'm sure it's gonna be fun. We are also going to... We are gonna go to the Off-Road Record Games March 9th through the 11th. We got our silver tickets, we're gonna be judges. Make sure you guys go on to mattsoffroadadventures.com. They're gonna invite all of you guys out there as well, so you buy tickets, go show up, and you get to come hang out with us for the weekend. We hope to see you guys there. It's gonna be pretty sweet sending this thing with the mouse star mullets on the back that we've created. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how much mud they sling. I'm a little afraid that the mud's gonna go whoosh right in our faces up there. Oh yeah, that's my face. Well, at least we're running stock wheels and they're not sticking out. Huge shout out to Duplicolor too. This paint legitimately stuck on pretty easy. I've spray painted a lot of cars and this thing actually stuck pretty good. It was only a handful of coats instead of 12 or 13 coats with most spray cans. So if this is something you guys wanna do, just find some buddies, hit up your local pull apart, and see what you can pull off. We'd like to see it, let us know. Hop in, let's go!